So you're getting into backpacking, but you don't really want to spend a whole lot of money and you really are trying to save some weight. So how do you do it? Well today, I'm going to give you six items that normally you may just throw it away, but it could be valuable gear that you could use on the trail every single time you go out. I'm also going to give you a hack at the end that could keep your feet and your hands warm and dry in the winter time. Let's do this. What's going on? I hope you're having a great week and that you're planning your next trip so that you can get out into the woods. Today I'm going to give you six items that would normally be considered trash, but we are going to talk about as useful gear that you can use all the time. Quick disclaimer on that though, it, this may be stuff that you totally disagree with me on, and that's okay. This may be stuff that you agree with me 100% on, that's okay too. The truth is, we all have things that we like to do when we go backpacking, and we don't all do it the same. So hopefully today, if you're new to backpacking, you can find some items here that can be useful to you when you go out on the trail. And if you're a grizzled old veteran, you may just be shaking your head going, yeah, I already know about this. And yeah, he's an idiot he doesn't know what he's talking about. Either way, enjoy the video, and hopefully I can help you out just a little bit. Keeping your gear dry is a big deal, especially clothing, electronics, uh, your, your toiletries kits. You like to keep these things dry because the last thing you want to do is open up your poop kit and all your toilet paper is soaking wet. It basically becomes paper mache. A great option for that is Dyneema fabric. They make great stuff sacks. They're ultra lightweight, really durable, and keep everything bone dry. But the problem is Dyneema is really expensive. So if you're trying to save a few bucks and you would like to keep your gear dry, not have to worry about a lot of weight, but you still want to have something that's gonna keep it waterproof. This is a great option, but it may not be the option for you. A simple Ziploc bag may be all you need. These are fantastic because they're waterproof. If you get the gallon sized ones, they can hold a lot of gear in them. As a matter of fact, I've been using this same bag right here for the past three and a half years of backpacking. This is a, it's not even a real Ziploc bag. As you can see, it's a great value bag from uh, Walmart. I keep all my toiletries in this. I have been now for over three years. Uh, it does a fantastic job. It doesn't weigh but a little less than an ounce. So it's a very lightweight option. Uh, it's a waterproof option. This sits literally in the front pocket on my backpack. So anytime rain hits, this thing is getting soaking wet and that toilet paper has never been soaked. These are great options for a lightweight waterproof sack where you don't have to spend a lot of money. I also use them for things like coffee. Uh, this is some, some ground coffee that I have that I'm gonna be taking out on my next trip. Got a little O2 sensor in there so that a O2 sensor with a little O2 absorber inside of it. Fantastic option, super lightweight, like I said, and it's great for keeping your stuff dry and it's lightweight storage that costs you little to nothing. These two bags combined maybe cost four to five cents. So you can't beat that compared to 35, $40 for a bag like this. A lot of times when we first get into backpacking, we buy a tent and one of the things that we think we need to buy is the footprint for it. I've had this footprint now for five years. I've used it once. Uh, it's bulky, it's kind of heavy, uh, and honestly, they're expensive, um, but I don't really want to carry it with me because of the weight. I don't want to carry it with me because of all these extra straps hanging off the end. For me, it's impractical. For some people, they love them, but for me, I'm not a big fan of these. Instead, what I like to do is carry some of this. This is a fabric called Tyvek. If you've ever been driving by construction sites or sites where people are building homes, you probably have noticed that on the outside of the house, before they put on any kind of siding, there's usually this fabric that they're putting on the outside that's called Tyvek. It's made by DuPont, and it's a very strong, durable, water-resistant, weather-resistant fabric that protects the house. It helps the longevity of the house. It helps keep the house warmer. And in the same way, this can be used as a ground sheet for your tent. Because of the ability to ward off water, because of the lightweight nature of it, it is so nice to use for underneath a tent or even a hammock when you go backpacking. I use mine all the time. Even though I haven't been tent camping in over two years, 
I still use the same piece of Tyvek underneath my hammock to set my gear on. So overnight, if any rain happens and water tends to roll towards where my gear is, it will go underneath the Tyvek and protect my gear. But John, how is this junk? How can I use it? If you go to any construction site, you'll notice that they always have remnants of Tyvek sitting around. It takes nothing more than going up and simply asking, hey, can I have a piece of that stuff that's sitting there? And you're probably gonna get it. If you know someone who works in construction, they can probably get their hands on some. And if you don't have either of those options, you can go on Amazon or eBay and buy it for five to $10. It's really inexpensive, it's super lightweight, and literally, a construction site's trash can become your treasure. When you're cooking in the backcountry, one of the things you're always fighting with is wind. If it's too windy, it's gonna blow the flame away from underneath of your pot and it's gonna make it really hard to cook. So a lot of times we buy windscreens, similar to this one right here. This is by Tokes, it's a titanium windscreen. Uh, does a great job of blocking off the wind, but quite honestly, sometimes it's kind of frustrating because it's so curvy and it, it kind of just does what it wants to do. It, it can be kind of frustrating. So maybe a better option for you is something like this. We all have aluminum foil sitting around the house. It's something that we use all the time, whether we're cooking with it, whether we're transporting food, whatever it is, we use this a lot. And what's great is a big roll of this is only a couple dollars and you're only gonna use mere pennies worth to do this. It makes a great windscreen. What's great is this is pliable. I can make this any shape I want to, I can bend it and it's gonna stay. I don't have to worry about it rolling back up. I don't have to worry about not being able to fit this in my pot. I can fold this down to the size I want, stick it in my pot and it's out of the way. It does a great job of blocking the wind. It's very rigid and like I said, it's super lightweight. This thing only weighs 0.7 ounces. So for something it's only gonna cost you pennies, you can save the money that you would spend on some prefabbed windscreen and just get some aluminum foil. It does a fantastic job. This is not a huge secret in the backpacking world, but you don't need to have a Nalgene bottle to hydrate. Uh, you're much better off getting your hands on bottles like these, especially in the spring, the summer, and the fall when it's not as cold. You have no reason to have hot water in them. They are just simply lightweight, easy options. Spend $2 on a bottle of water and you get an ultra lightweight bottle to go with it. Instead of throwing these away, save them. You can use them all the time. And since you probably already knew this, we're gonna move on. We all have soda cans, beer cans, just aluminum cans sitting around the house. I'm always drinking these seltzer water things all the time. Yeah, it's seltzer water, I'm trying to lose weight. So these cans can be thrown away. You can crumple them up, throw them out, send them to recycling. Uh, whatever it is you do with these cans. But what if you could take these cans and turn them from this into something like this? These are alcohol stoves. They're super easy to use. Uh, they're super easy to make. There are YouTube videos all over the place showing you how you can make your own alcohol stove. This one in particular I've talked about about a dozen times. This is the Spagiver stove 2.0. It's um, something I've been using now for a little over a year. And as you can see, it's definitely gotten the use. You can see all the, the markings on the outside. This is a great stove. Weighs less than an ounce and is easy to make on your own. Again, pennies on the dollar for this. The lightest weight, cheapest stove that a lot of people buy these days is the BRS 3000, which I have one of and I've actually talked about in other videos. And as great as that is, this weighs less and it costs less. So if you're just getting into backpacking and you wanna save ounces, you wanna save grams, which I'm not a gram weenie, this is a great option. I'll put a link to the video that Spagiver did on how to make this in the description below. So if you'd like to make your own alcohol stove, you can do it very easily. Like I said earlier, there are so many videos online about how you can make these stoves. If you're trying to save money and you're trying to save weight, don't throw these cans away. Make a stove. Also, maybe if you wanna make a little extra money, make a bunch of stoves and sell them. People love these things. Don't look at this as trash, look at this as a potential treasure. This next item is one that isn't necessarily trash, but it's something you put trash in, and that's a trash compactor bag. 
few years ago, I bought this container from Lowe's of 20 trash compactor bags. They're all 20 gallons each, and they fit perfectly inside of a backpack. If you're running anywhere from 30 to 70 liters in your backpack, you can use these. They're perfect for keeping your gear dry, and they're perfect for just fitting everything inside of it. I've been using these now, like I said, this container of them since 2019. Actually, I've been using this since 2018. I've been using this same container since 2018. Three years ago, I bought this container of trash compactor bags. There's 20 of them in here. And I still have about 10 or 12 left because they can be used over and over and over again. I use these as pack liners for every one of my trips. And I have never had wet gear when I've used these. They're fantastic, they're lightweight, and they're easy to get your hands on. They keep everything bone dry, they're completely waterproof, and super cheap. Again, they're used to hold trash, but if you hang on to them, they can be fantastic for keeping all of your gear dry on every single trip. So that's six items that you can use on every single trip, and now I wanna give you a little hack that you can use if you're someone like me who likes to use trail runners that are not waterproof in the winter time, this might be something that you can use that's extremely inexpensive, as in free, and it can protect your feet from the elements, as well as giving extra insulation when you're backpacking, and that is the simple grocery bag. What's great about these is you can literally put them over your sock on your foot inside of your shoe. They'll keep your feet dry and they'll also add some extra insulation in your feet to keep them from getting cold. Uh, Dixie even used these when she was on one of her long trails. She put them on when she was hiking through snow because she wanted to keep her feet dry and a little bit warmer. And so she was actually using these bags to do it. They're great because when you go to the grocery store, they don't charge you for the bags. So you've got these probably in your house right now, whether it's at a grocery store or a drug store, these little plastic bags can come in so useful in situations where the weather isn't necessarily what you want. Also, if it's colder out and it starts to rain and you're not wearing waterproof shoes, your feet are going to get soaked from the rain. This is a great way to keep your feet dry in those conditions and not have to worry about your socks being soaking wet when you get to camp at night. Putting these on can keep your feet a little extra dry, can allow your socks to stay dry, and at night when you get to camp, it's great to have dry, warm feet as opposed to frozen, ice cold, wet feet. Keeping your feet warm is one of the most important things you can do when you're backpacking, and in some situations, this can be valuable. Don't do this in the summer. Do not do this in the summer. This is just gonna make your feet sweat like crazy. Deal with wet feet in the summer because this is not gonna be something you're gonna enjoy. It does keep in warmth and in the wintertime, that's great. But in the summertime, in the spring, in the fall, do not do this. Use this when it's ice cold out. Don't use it when it's nice and toasty warm because your feet are gonna be more than toasty warm. They're gonna be disgusting, covered in sweat. And when that sweat dries, it becomes salty. And that salty sweat then becomes blisters. So don't do this. Don't use this tip in the summer. Have I mentioned that you shouldn't do this in the summer? So there you go. A few ideas of gear that you can use on every single trip and one tip to potentially help you out in the winter time when things get kind of crazy and really cold. So what items do you guys use when you're out on the trail that most people would just consider junk, but you have found to be useful gear on all of your trips? Do you have some hacks in certain weather conditions that can help you enjoy the trip better by using gear that people would probably consider junk? Leave those in the comments below. And until next time, stay strong, hike long, and I'll catch you on the next go around.